we need to be preparing because something big is coming. I don't have no dates. I can't tell you dates. I'm not a date setter. God has not given me any dates. But I'm telling you right now that something is coming soon. And we need to get our spiritual houses in order. We need to be praying and fasting. We need to be in the word of God. These things that the enemy has put in front of us as distraction, the music, the celebrities, the hair, the makeup, everything that God is that that, that the enemy is putting in front of us, it is for distraction. Y'all need to listen. Put down the Facebook. Put it down. Unless you listen to something that's worth listening to. You need to be in your houses praying and learning the word of God. You need to be fasting. You need to be getting yourselves in order. God is not playing. He's tired of the games. He's tired of us playing church. Just because you go to church, it doesn't mean anything. You have to do this on your own. There is a darkness coming over this earth that we will not be able to withstand unless you know the word of God, unless you're studying, unless you're reading, unless you're fasting, unless you're in the face of God. It's not through your father, your mother. It's not through anybody else. You got to do it on your own. God is sending his vessels. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is all over me. God is sending his people to warn. It's time out, y'all. We got to stop this mess. Who cares about what you look like? Who cares about how whatever? Y'all, it's distraction and it's vanity. And it's going to send us straight to hell. It's going to send us straight to hell because we're not looking for God. God is tired. He's tired. He is tired and he wants us to be obedient. You have to listen to what I'm saying. Take heed to the message and not the messenger. Something is coming. God showed me in a vision and in a dream. He showed me this a couple of years ago, but he waited till now for me to come out with these things that he has shared with me. This darkness, y'all, something is going to happen. Some big major event is going to happen. And it's going to be total darkness over this earth. Do you hear me? It's in Revelation. Okay? It's in Revelation. And when that happens, you don't need to be outside. You don't need to be going to work. You need to stay up behind in the house. And you need to be praying. You need to be seeking the Lord right now while you have time. It says, seek you the Lord right now while he may be found. It's time to seek Jesus, y'all. He's tired. He is tired. He is tired. And we don't have much time. I cannot stress that enough. Something is coming. And you need to be ready. The only way you're going to be able to fight is with your word. The word of God. Your Bible. Study it now because even that is going to be taken away. I saw it. It's going to be taken away. You're not going to be able to pick that Bible up and read it when you get ready. So hide the word in your heart. Hide the word in your heart. Study. Read, pray, and fast. Right now, you need to be putting your scriptures up in your house. Post it on your walls. Write them down. Have a notebook, something. Y'all, listen. Listen. The time is now. The time is now. Pray over your children. Plead the blood of Jesus of your children, y'all. These, When this darkness comes, there are going to be manifestation of these demons, y'all. I'm telling you what I know. These fallen stars or fallen angels, they will be manifesting themselves by the power of Satan. They will be manifesting themselves, y'all. And it's going to be something so intense. I saw it and I felt it. And there's nothing to play with. The only way you are going to be able to fight and survive and not give in to the enemy is if you know the word of God. Listen to what I'm saying. It's urgent. It is so urgent. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus, for the warning. He loves us enough to warn us. Y'all, it's time. It's no more playing around. Pay attention to the stuff that your kids watch. The enemy 
Satan is on the scene. He is on the scene. It is not long before we have to go through perilous times. God has sent forth his messengers to warn y'all, listen and take heed. This is not something that you need to look at right now and then put it down and forget about it tomorrow. Take this to the Lord in prayer. Shabbat Shalom Saints and welcome back to Wakefulness Theology. My name is Messenger Paula and just a quick note, um, if you are new to my channel, if you if this is the first video you're seeing, I beg you to please go back to the beginning and at least watch this full playlist because in one hour, I cannot explain all of this. It's impossible. And if you're only seeing this video, you're just getting pieces of the puzzle and it's very easy to misunderstand and you definitely will not have the whole picture if you um, don't start from the beginning. Also, this is a process that we're going through. Um, I'm getting these messages directly from Ruach HaKadosh and Holy Yahushua. Uh, they are teaching me and guiding me and I have been commanded to share what they are giving me with my brothers and sisters. So as a servant, I am doing this. So these, this is not my opinion. I do the best I can to show and prove uh, what I have been taught and, and um, I just pray that you have the stamina, that you have the discipline, that you have the courage, that you have the passion and the drive to take on this challenge. Um, it's, it's the same as if you see an athlete uh, running a marathon and you're watching the marathon and you're standing there and you're saying, I don't have the time or the energy to watch them run this marathon. It's too long. And so you go home. But if you don't have the time and the energy to watch someone um, competing, then how are you yourself ever going to compete? You won't be able to compete yourself because you can't even watch someone else do it. Do you see what I mean? This is a sport. This is a spiritual sport. We're in this for the long run. I'm a competitor. We are competing. We are in the uh, marathon for our salvation, for the salvation of our, our, our friends and our families and our loved ones and our brothers and sisters. This is a race to get home, to be with the Father. This is a long race, just like it says in uh, Corinthians. I will put it on the screen, the Bible verse. And um, those who endure until the end are the ones that will be saved. So if you can't even take the time to watch these videos, then how are you going to compete? Do you see what I mean? You, you draw to you what is inside of you is what I'm trying to say. So the people who are drawn to these videos and who have the passion and the stamina and the energy to watch them are those who are themselves in the competition. And so they're watching this because it's what's inside of them already. So if you don't have the passion, the drive, the stamina, the interest or whatever to see this, then that just means you're not really that into it. And that's Considering the topic of what we're talking about in these videos, that's uh, that's perilous. That is a big. That's that's uh, kind of scary. Um, but to be honest with you, we are very, very few people who are interested in um, this depth of knowing, understanding, trying to know, trying to understand, trying to connect, trying to prepare ourselves to be ready when Holy Yahushua calls us and, and, and or comes back. And that is what we're doing in these video saints. So um, it is not a matter of agreeing or disagreeing. It is a matter of running that race, pre preparing yourself and helping Helping your brothers and sisters to prepare themselves so please again 
All the information for these videos are on my website. I put on the video page the order of the videos, um, the playlist, the links. All you have to do is click, Saints. Um, the website, I have. I am upgrading the website. It will take me a while to uh, put back all of the letter lines properly. So now, with all of that said, how to get on the ARC? Prepare your house. Now, Saints, this is very important because everybody and their mama are getting messages about the three days of darkness okay I did a video about the darkness and I'll put it on the screen right here um, it I did it it wasn't a direct message that I received it was just an understanding that went along with what we're talking about here we were talking about uh, we are talking about how we as the body of Christ coming together we are going to symbolically as a group of people go we're going to be going through again what holy Yahushua went through when he was a man here on earth okay uh, all the way up through the the uh, crucifixion and, and so forth so after he was crucified there was the three days of darkness right so this is gonna happen again to us um, as we mature into the actual body of Christ here on earth and we've talked about it a lot and we I've received confirmation upon confirmation upon confirmation so in my spirit my faith is is being built stronger and stronger every day to to know that uh, 2025 that time period is when we will be uh, materialized when we will be uh, realized as the sons of um, holy Yahushua here on earth I, I know that now in order for you guys to know that if you've been watching these videos and if you continue watching the videos as we live and as we go through these Bible verses are going to be coming true and I see them coming true every day right in front of our eyes it's happening okay so every time a Bible verse comes true that should build your faith that if this is true if that was true in the past if this is true in the present and if that comes true in the future then you know what that means that means that this is also true Okay, so we have, this is 2019. Between 2019 and 2025, you're gonna be seeing a lot of these things coming true. That is supposed, that is done on purpose to build your faith because when that time comes, when Holy Yahushua is coming to call us with a shout, your faith needs to be absolute. Your faith needs, to, it needs to be crystal clear. And I've played, I will play some videos and I played one or two in the past videos where there, the sisters, they were having dreams about the escape and they were saying that they they knew they knew it was going to happen they knew it right and that's where we have to be before holy yahushua calls us and i've had a couple of people contact me people are saying to me well the rapture is happening right now we're we're and, and i'm 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 like well if you watch the videos you'll understand that that's what i'm saying why do you think we're going through this? I'm saying that right now we are travelers. Right now we are able to go in and out of the ark. Right now this is happening. Let's say Holy Yahushua was going to call with his shout. He's about to call us. Let's say it's going to happen in five minutes. In five minutes, you are not going to be able to do everything you need to do to go in the in, in the escape. It's, it's not, five minutes is not enough time. Do you see what I mean? Somebody who don't know nothing about none of this and ain't haven't done none of the work you're not it's impossible in five minutes to just be like ready to go in the escape it's not gonna happen so it, it, you guys can stop sending me emails or whatever talking about it's happening right now I know it's happening right now that's why I'm doing the the, the videos do you do you see what I mean it's it, it um this is the preparation that we have to do to be able to be ready to go when he calls us and that process is happening now the ability to go in and out of the ark to go to heaven and talk and be with holy yahushua whatever you you have to be getting that ready now okay so again i don't want you to panic either he's given us the matthew timeline matthew 24 that i've talked about in the past couple of videos where we can see the time and again you don't have to believe me it's written in the bible holy yahushua said it himself you don't have to believe me just look at it it's on my website look at it and if it comes true if it came true in the past if it's coming true now and if it comes true uh, next year then you know that's up for you to to understand whether that is true or not but it, between now and from what I understand from the messages I'm getting between now and uh, 20, 
30, 20, 31, or I think it's 20, what I'll put it on the screen, but it's it's like 20, 24 until 2031, that whole seven year period. That is a great important watch period. So we still have time uh, to prepare ourselves before we get to that 20, 24 to 20, 31 watch period and anyone who um, is saying otherwise it's not it's unbiblical again in Matthew 24 it says clearly that the Antichrist has to be in power before Holy Yahushua is gonna call us before we can escape before he can come back there has to be an Antichrist in power the Prince of Persia and so for the moment the there's no Prince of Persia in power yet Okay, so we still have time, but you got to do the work. You see, this work that I'm doing is just as, it's more difficult than watching the videos. If you think it's difficult to watch the videos, how difficult do you think it is to make the videos? So we're all in this boat together, saints. Just pull up your, your, your big girl and your big boy pants and just do a little bit day by day, teaspoon by teaspoon. You want to be reading your word. You want to be doing your spiritual routines. I'm going to come back and do another video about the Sabbath because that's another message that's very important. And we're just going to prepare ourselves and our families day by day and we're going to be ready. All right, saints, you got it. Woohoo! All right, speech is over. Let's get on with the show. How to get on the ark. Prepare your house. <laughs> all right, saints. So here we are. We've talked about all these points here. And so right now we're only going to focus on the escape and how all of this fits into the escape. And remember, we're still on the section that is the shield and understanding how this understanding is going to protect us with our shield. Okay. So uh, let's just get straight to it. I've been wanting to talk about this for two weeks. The codes and our names are hidden inside of us. Um, here on the screen, you see these two videos, we watched them before. The sister was explaining about the house, the White House, and we were saying how many of us are having the dreams, have had the dreams about the house. Um, so here in the house, it represents the Ark when you're um, going to that house. And we know that from the Troll Hunters playlist. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we, we've studied extensively the house in the Troll Hunter playlist. It's the 1111 deck playlist, the first one. Um, here, the sister right here, Sister Holly, she was explaining to us how in her dream, she saw that um, this is where the Ark is and we're able to go in and out of the Ark and the Ark is inside of us, right? So this is like a multi-dimensional um, uh, journey where you go inside of yourself. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you that um, I, next week. It's, it's um, called the Taurus field, actually. The idea, the imagery is like a Taurus field where you are in line and you are balanced through Holy Yahushua. Everything we're doing is through Holy Yahushua. We're not doing anything on our own. We're not forcing anything. We're only living by his holy word, following his commandments and hearing his voice and being obedient by doing that you come into alignment your your dna is activated you are cleaned um and this is when you're in balance and this is when you have this proper uh, movement of, of energy going around you and creating uh, the the force field around you which is called the taurus field i'm putting it on the the screen right now and we're going to talk about that next week but what i'm saying is that all of this that we're going through is a natural process where your your names your the code your name and all of that the name which is the name of the most high father right we've talked about that that he gave us right we talked about that it gets uh, activated and that is your code and so it's kind of like um Let's say this is my iPhone. So, uh, you, if you have Apple Pay inside of your cell phone, you've download you've downloaded the app, right? And so, when you go to a store and you just wave your phone over top of the whatever technology it is, it unlocks the payment, right? It's because the code and the the program they can speak to each other. You don't have to put a key in there. It is it's like an automatic digital. Wi-Fi thing that's happening, right? It's the same with the door, the code, and us being in alignment. Because we are, uh, the code is inside of us, when we're activated, we can just go right on through the door. It opens for us. It's like a, a easy pass, you know, when you're driving on the freeway and then you don't have to stop and pay um, 
the toll because you have one of those cards in your car and you can just drive through the toll because the toll recognizes your your pass do you see what I mean that's what that is and that pass is having your name knowing his name being activated being converted being turned right side up being healed by his stripes is that making sense I don't know if I'm saying it in clear enough but that's that's what it is okay so that's what they were telling us last week through their dreams and we've explained that scientifically all right now we really want to talk about these codes um, and understand what they mean because we can see these codes as a representation of um, the Most High Father's name in creation and we can read these codes and understand what they mean so what do they mean the 1717 arc arcs because we're talking about the Ark of Noah and we're also talking about the covenant the Ark of the Covenant as well um, and it also represents time portals and or dimensions okay so let me show you that we've talked about it before I'll try to be brief let me refresh your memory okay Saints so this is a video of mine on the playlist it's number three how to get on the Ark live in the holy place and this is where I explain 1717 so you can see the time mark right here is 1144 <laughs> literally one 144,000 114, 14, 40, 144. So here is a 4 4. It's upside down. Two fours. The 4-4, four, four, I talked about it being um, the cross. The 4-4 four, four literally represents Yahushua on the cross because when you are in this position, you have one, two, three, four uh, joining parts. And so that's why it's four. And the cross is the same. You have the cross and you have four connecting parts. So that is, when Yahushua was on the cross, that is 4-4. Four, four. It literally recommends uh, symbolizes the sacrifice of Yahushua being on the cross. That is the 4-4. Four, four. Um, of course, as I said, you have many other meanings. You, you can have the positive side of it, you can have the negative side of it, you can have it symbolically, you can have you know the code. There's many other definitions, but in general, we're talking about seeing it as a picture. It represents Yahushua on the cross. A picture of. So if you take a screenshot of me right now, that is my image. The arc, like you can do in math, you have the pre-image and the image, just like you can do in math, you can do anywhere. The arc was the pre-image of both the cross and our Savior, which is 4-4, four, four, which is 17-17, seventeen, seventeen, like I showed you earlier. Do you remember? 17-17, seventeen, seventeen, four, four. Do you Do you see, do you, saints, do you see what I'm saying? The 17 or 1717, or the 171, or the 717, it shows, it becomes 4-4. Four, 4-4 four. Four, four is Yahushua on the cross. The Ark is symbolic of Yahushua on the cross. We're talking about because of the dimensions and the wood, okay? The dimensions are match that of a man being elongated with wood. So they, they are symbolically representing the same thing. So even with the numbers, the holy letters, the Ark was the pre-image of both the cross and our Savior. So to make these comparisons easier to understand, here's a chart. So before, when they were talking about the Ark of the Covenant, that is symbolic, the same as the Ark of Noah's Ark. So the Ark of the Covenant, they also call it the Ark of the Testimony. And 
in the Bible verse that we're dealing with, it's Revelation 11, who are the people who he calls up? They, he calls them the witnesses. And what do witnesses do? They give testimony, the ark of the testimony. So inside the ark, you have the Ten Commandments. You have the rod of Aaron. You have a golden pot of manna, spiritual nourishment, and the history on the ark of the covenant. So the point that I'm showing you right now, because we're talking about wood, right? We were talking about the wood in Brother Rob's dream, the wood in the sister's dream that she used for a bridge. We were talking about the wood of the ark and the wood of the cross. They're representing the same things, right? With the ark of the covenant, you have the same thing. During their 40 years, again, you have the 40. I'm not lying. Look at this. Again, the 40 of wandering in the wilderness. The Israelite people used, what did they use? Acacia wood for building the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant. God commands them to use this wood, but bears no spiritual significance. Yeah, they don't know. They don't know any better. There's everything has a significance. Every single thing. There's nothing that does not have a significance. Just like it says in the Bible, God even counts the numbers of our hairs. If he if he knows the numbers of our hairs, then everything has a meaning. Here we here we go again with the wood. It's the same symbolically. It's the same. So the meaning of acacia is honorable. And I told you guys uh, a few times. I told you in the last video that honor means fulfilling a covenant. I'm just showing you what is there. Look at that. Acacia, it means honorable. Honorable means fulfilling a covenant. And I've talked about that before. So let's go back here. This Bible verse, Jeremiah 31, when it says, but this shall be the covenant. That is what Acacia means. Covenant. Fulfilling a cover covenant means honorable. Acacia means honorable. This right here means Acacia, the wood. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. 153 right here and we know that 153 is the image of 17 after those days saith the Lord I will put my law in their inward parts I will write it in their hearts this is the Ark of the Covenant because inside the Ark of the Covenant is the Ten Commandments we are the Ark of the Covenant we are the Ark the law is written in our hearts the Holy of Holies the tabernacle, the holy place. It's written right here. I will put their law in my law in their inward parts and write it on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. So don't let anybody tell you that you're not supposed to search inside yourself. The kingdom of heaven is inside you. It's written in the Bible in black and white. Look at this. All right, saints. So there you go. The 1717 represents the arcs with an S, and it also represents everything that you can describe uh, with Holy Yahushua was crucifixion. It's our, our redemption. It's the covenant, a covenant that has been made between us and the Most High Father. Um, it's all, all of those words that we can use to describe Holy Yahushua's crucifixion and what that means for us is represented in the 1717 code. All right. Now, this right here, you can see this is just a thumbnail from Enter the Stars video, one of his videos that he's done recently. And I want you to notice that it says Q equals the 17th letter, and then he points out 17, and then, you know, here it's like on this clock, there's 17, whatever it is, it, he counted them and there were 17 of them. The, I mean, if you can watch the video if you want, but what's in the video is less important. I just want to show you how 1717 is manifesting here on this picture because he wrote 1717 and he's showing a clock and the fact that he is connecting Q to it. Now just remember, we're going to talk about this again later, but what I'm showing you is that this 1717 not only means represents the arcs, it also represents some kind of time portal or dimension. It, it represents this place right here. Do, do you do you, if you remember the sister from her video that I played a couple of weeks ago this place right here is what she was uh, calling the ark 
in her dream and she showed a picture of the ark also being inside of us and through that connection we can travel back and forth so this traveling back and forth is a portal or dimension that's what that is so if you are redeemed by the blood of Christ then you can access that dimension or portal okay and it is also connected with time because you know just like I showed you in that clip a um, hundred times with from the Hobbit that I we talked about in maybe two place playlists ago and I broke down that movie um, just like you can see here he's outside of time he's outside he's in a separate dimension right that's what we're dealing with that's why the 1717 not only represents the arcs but it also represents this time portal or dimension that we're able to travel in and out of because we have been redeemed you got it so the 1414 code now this is the bridal army this represents the bridal army and the second coming of holy yahushua now i talked about this in an old video so um if you do a if you go to my youtube channel and then you just search and you put l-i-n or l-y-n-n -N, or Revelation 19 14 you should uh, this video should pop up and this is where I'm talking this is where we discovered um, the 1414 code that's when I discovered it I was given it of course by Ruach HaKadosh because me by myself I'm, I can't do anything I can barely tie my shoes I mean really it's all Holy Yahushua and Ruach HaKadosh to the glory uh, I give all the glory to the Most High Father and Yahushua Mashiach's holy name so um, also in this video here I uh, talk a little bit more about Lily Lynn. That's something that happened that uh, Ruach HaKadosh used to sh teach us this 1414 code, okay? But um, to be quick and just to show you quickly, it's in Revelation 1414. And I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one sat like upon the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. So this is talking about the second coming of Holy Yahushua and the number is 1414. So I'm just going to show you some verses, but I'm sure if you go to the Bible or you go wherever and if you see this code, it's always from a different perspective. So your brain, your mind, your spiritual eyes and ears have, has to be a little larger than just the one aspect of what the verse is talking about. But here, if you can understand that here we're talking about the second coming of Holy Yahushua, that is 1414. In Revelation 14, we're talking about, in general 14, we're talking about the um, 144,000 and having the Father's name written in their foreheads, which we've talked about extensively, what that means. And if you look at 14.4, it's talking about um, these are they who, which follow the Lamb with soever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, bearing the fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Revelation 1.4, and then you put another 4 for the fourth verse, you have 144,000. Uh, we also have Revelation 19.14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So here it's talking about his bridal army. So again, what I want to show you is that anytime you're seeing the 14, usually, most likely, it's talking about or has some reference to um, holy, the second coming of Holy Yahushua, the bridal army, the 144,000, um, anything kind of like that. So what I want to say is, please follow me. It's not easy to explain. Explain. Um, thank you for being patient with me. 14 by itself, for example, is what we just explained. It can represent the second coming of Holy Yahushua. It can represent the bridal army. It can represent the 144,000. It represents all of these kinds, kinds of things, right? But specifically, 1414 represents the portal of those things because you go in the door that's 14 and if you want to come out of the door it's still 14 so coming in and coming out is 14 14. do you see what i mean so if you have a round trip ticket and the the ticket costs 14 dollars you're going to have 14 two times in your pocket on the first ticket for 14 and then the second ticket is going to have 14 dollars written on the ticket it's 14 14 your round trip ticket do you see what i mean that's why it's the code is 1414 it's the it's representing the portal 
to the second coming of Holy Yahushua. It's the, it's the portal to the coming of the 144,000. It is the portal to the escape. All things involved with Holy Yahushua and the 144,000 and the bridal army is 1414, 1919. I talked about that in this video right here. Uh, this is my um, YouTube in its uh, 2022 spiritual activation codes. This is uh, video three out of seven and I was breaking down the dark tower. So I'm sure if you go here and you just put dark tower, it's the first thing that pops up. Now I talked about the 1919 code again with Sister Polly's vision, but we'll look at that at the end. I just want to remind you quickly what it means. So here you see, uh, this is the first shot of the movie and you see that they made the T into a cross. So that's how you know what they're talking about. But as I explained in this video, they inverse the roles. So um, they make what's good, bad, and what's bad, good. Um, so here's one of the first scenes and you see the 1919. I mean, it's not, it's not even hidden. I mean, it's very obvious. The skies are going to turn red, but I saw a video the other day where they were saying that it's going to be purple because when you mix red with blue, it's purple. So there will be a time when the sky, like Princess Purple Rain, purple, and then, and then in 1999, the sky was all purple. There were people running everywhere. So they say the sky will be purple at some point because of that. And so now I'm starting to see this in the movies. You have it here, you have the red sky, and then we had it in, of course, Stranger Things, the red sky. Um, and then you have the, the beast that's coming. So it's possible, guys, that somehow these things are going to align where we might start, they, start, they might start telling us about... Um, Wormwood, uh, Planet X, or whatever you want to call it, this, this planet that's going to enter into our system at the same time that we're hearing that the, the, the Prince of Persia is, is going to be revealing himself. The signs are, are, are saying this, so I, I don't know. Dream people are having dreams about those asteroids because the thing is, we won't supposedly, we won't actually get hit by the Planet X. But it's going to be pushing in all of these asteroids. So I've had the asteroid dream. Um, I'll talk about that again in another video. I know a lot of us, the saints, have had asteroid dreams. So, you know, hey, that's what they're talking about in this movie. Um, and so here on the TV, you see right here, recent earthquakes. And I can't, I tried to read what was down there, but I couldn't. Maybe someone else can. And so you know that the earthquakes we're having is... I don't know. I don't know if it's a mix of the work that they're doing. You know, they're doing scientific experiments with the particle colliders, and we have many of them, many more than we thought. We know we have about we know about CERN in Swiss uh, Switzerland, but there's also some in America. And the guy in that video I told you to watch, um, he talks about those. So they're doing this magnetic uh, manipulation. Also, they're doing secret experiments with something. I don't even want to talk about it because I don't want to get flagged. You guys, if you want to know about that, look at that guy's video. He explains everything. Um, but they're doing these secret exper uh, experiments with magnets. And so them doing that on top of this planet coming, which one is causing the earthquakes? Probably all of it, you know. I don't know. It's not good. But here in the movie, what they're saying is it's they're being caused from the tower. So here we go, 1919. You see this so guys um as you can see what we were talking about in this video that i did uh, the 5th of january we're starting to see it coming true you will understand by the end of this video god be willing that the escape is going to happen at a time where there is an explosion and it has something to do with the 8-8. Eight, eight. And that's what i'm trying to show you here just bear with me okay and everything that we i was talking about in this video bears witness to that all right hold on hold your horses so here's a little bit more about 1919 door that's why i'm saying 1919 represents the wilderness 1919 represents the wilderness so when i did this video i didn't fully understand the 1919 
uh, represents a portal. That, that's what we're explaining. And the portal that this goes to is Armageddon, not the wilderness. Actually, in real, and that's why I put right here in real life, it's 1414, because after I understood the deception in the movie. So in real life, where when the woman of Revelation 12, when she goes into the wilderness, and I believe it's Revelation 12, 14. Let's look at that quickly. It is, saints. This is how you know it's true, because I can't, how can I make that up? I can't. It's right here before your eyes. Here you got the 14. This is the 14, saints. And the woman was given two wings of an eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she was nourished for times, time and a half. Okay? That's, um, that's what the 14, 14, 14 portal goes to. It leads us to safety. It leads us to the second coming. It leads us to the escape. It leads us to something that's good and holy and of, of, of holy Yahushua, if that makes sense. Now, the 1919 is Armageddon. And Satan's army. Let's keep going. So here on his wall, we see two suns. One, two, one, two. When this planet X, Wormwood, or whatever it is called, arrives, there will be two suns in the sky. So this is a direct connection. Now, so here you have more about 1919. So all throughout this video, I've been telling you how they switch things around so they make the good things bad and the bad things good. What they did in this movie is you see it says 1919 but look very closely here it's they've written the nine like a four and that's I talked about that in the last video with uh, Jay-Z that he is um, using the 444 and then you turn it upside down and it's the 666 but I even have more to tell you about that in the in the last video um, but that's the same thing they're doing here this is a four you see the difference in the way that they're writing it here or here and here. This is a four. So what the Holy Spirit has led me to understand, in the movie, they're saying that 1919 is the gate. So 19 is representing the gate to go, and then the other 19 is representing the gate to come back. And the Holy Spirit is prodding me to let you know very clearly that in real life, it is not 19, it is 14 saints. It is 14 saints. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. They tried to get us. They didn't get us. We got it. We got it. Okay. So five dead in downtown gas explosion. So this is another clue because we have the number five. So we know about the five groups of the Rider Army. And I think this is um, talking about when I, there will be a point where all five groups leave. We won't be here. We won't be going through the entirety of tribulation. So... The five are leaving. <clears throat> now this total... Um, I just want to comment on uh, that. So you, you could see right there in the movie, this is confirming that when the escape happens, there will be some kind of explosion. I'm, I'm building up to explain to you after, um, but just bear with me. So remember, this right here, this some kind of explosion happens at the same time that the five representing the five groups of the bridal army um leave now the reason i say dead is saying leave because you remember last week i took an hour to break down this picture that you see on your screen right now from manifest and i explained uh, in the bible verse that you see on your screen right now how this is representing us dying with holy yahushua so that we can rise again in his resurrection yes and this has to do with us becoming the body of Christ on earth yes so that's why they're using this term as in the symbolism as in dead but it doesn't mean we actually die do you see what I mean it means actually that we're born again and we are rising when this explosion happens the five are leaving <clears throat> now this totally fits our dreams everybody and their mama is dreaming of something like a house okay um sister chelsea dreamed about it the sister from south africa dreamed about it and others have dreamed about this house so what my interpretation was of that is that this is an, this is where we go to be safe again but of course in this movie instead of it being a safe house like in our dreams it is a satanic possessed house of course so here um, I'm explaining 
I didn't understand at that time that the house represents the Ark, but now we know in hindsight that it represents the Ark. And here in this movie, they're showing the code, how you get in the house, in and out, and how you get through the portal. It's all there. Of course, but again, they switch everything around. So here he goes to this house and he puts in the code, which is 1919, and the door opens, the gate opens, um, the house is possessed with a demon and it tries to stop him. You see here. So again, um, the movie is showing how you, and, and our dreams. I played the sister's dream last, uh, two weeks ago where she was saying she went to the house and she put in the, the code with her hand, like an iPad or something. Me. So I got to this house. So I had a code and I know it given to me by my father. I got to the door and I tried working out the code. And my dad would appear at my side and help me because I would go through. And the co the cool thing was, even though it was a, a, a you know a paper notepad, it was like digital, and it almost looked like an iPad. It was just That's how it's represented in the movies and in our dreams. But in reality, the code is inside of us, so you can just go through because you have it but that's how it's represented and I thought it was ironic how they used wood to show um, the this boy being attacked we just talked about the significance of wood right so this is the last code that he's using uh, 6011 which of course is 911 upside down and backwards which is what they like to do and I've explained that in other videos as well it's not you can clearly see how that movie the tower is demonstrating what I'm explaining here. So as far as the 1919 code, uh, you have Revelation 1919, and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. So of course, this is talking about the army of Satan. Okay, and so that is how we know that the 1919 code is going to take you to Armageddon. We also know that this is 2019, and so that's how I knew from the Troll Hunters uh, playlist, if you go back and watch that, uh, the Medchezeldeck um, 1111 playlist, we talk in that video a lot about 2019, and I was saying that it seems to be there's going to be some water event, but not the water event, just something that has to do with water. And we talked about how this is the year that the Satan's army is going to start to appear. Both of these things have and are happening, if you can see, because this is the beginning of the Hebrew New Year. We were warned that in five months, all of this stuff was going to kick off. Now it is, it has been five months. This is the spring. This is the heat. We're, we're approaching the Hebrew New Year. We're here. Passover is uh, going to start on April 19th and we are now being warned that this is the time that we're going to start seeing all this stuff jump off. That's why the name of this video this video is prepare your house because we can see from the codes when you're when you're able to read it we can see and understand that it about jump off. I don't know specifically how it's going to go down in what order, but it's about to jump off. So just a quick uh, message from Brother David uh, from Wakefulness Theology, a group on Facebook. And he was given a message, uh, him and Sister Polly, they were both given messages that we should put Bible verses in our windows to protect ourselves. It's, it's a little bit like what happened in Egypt when the Hebrews were going through the plagues in Egypt before they were before they had Exodus. So we're going to be going through all these plagues and all these things are going to be happening again because the 400 years of slavery is over for the Hebrews. We have done 400 years, it's over. So that means judgment is about to fall upon the land where the Hebrews were enslaved, which is pretty much the whole world, um, but very specifically America. So these things are about to happen because it's over now. The 400 years are over now. Let me show you what Brother uh, David has been told that we should do as the Hebrews put blood over the doors so that the, um, so, so that the curse would pass them by. Hello, my brothers and sisters. I hope you all are doing well. Um, I'm sharing this video with all of you because um, this morning when I was impressed, Father told me to take out, um, he told me to take out um, scriptures for, um, for the house, for the windows, and for the doors, just like how he said, like how he told us to do. 
you know, and I just finished doing that. I just made my own copies. Um, songs 23, songs 91, and songs 18. Um, verse, um, verse 1 and 2 on songs 18, and also on um, Deuteronomy um, 6, verse 4, chapter 6, verse 4. So that's what I did. You see, I, I took out my own copy. Took out a whole bunch of copies. Uh, that's what I did, brothers and sisters. So because Father's not playing, he's, he wants for us to, um, you know, to stay in His Word and, you know, and to um, follow His instructions. You know, um, so we need to, you know, keep ourselves protected, you know, against, you know, against whatever's coming towards us. You know, so. Okay, saints. So uh, there you go. Thank you, brother David, for that message. Um, that is what I have done. I, I will be adding more Bible verses because I've only actually put Psalms um, 91 there, but I'm going to go ahead and put the other ones as well in my doors and in my windows um, because we have been warned about a, a three day, three days of darkness. Now that when I say prepare your house, um, I pray that you take heed to the warning that Brother David was given. Um, I have. Sister Polly has also given a warning that's very strong, and I'll, I'll be playing that uh, another time. So you, you need to be preparing yourself spiritually, meaning everything we're talking about on this playlist, what you have, the inside interior work that you have to be doing to prepare yourself. That's the most important. After you want to prepare your house, like we said, put the Bible verses in your windows, anoint your house, uh, pray over your, your family, your friends, your home, your business, plead the blood of Christ. This is uh, what uh, Sister Polly has told me as well. We need to be pleading the blood of Christ every time you need to be pleading the blood of Christ over your loved ones and your homes and your businesses every day when people come in and out of your house every day and you pray, um, you, you say, I plead the, the blood of Holy Yahushua HaMashiach over my friends and my family and my home and my business in Yahushua HaMashiach's holy name, like on a daily, for protection. Also, we need to be getting our canned goods and our water and batteries and whatever you need to endure minimum three days of darkness, all right? Unless you're going to fast, and that's what I have been told as well. Now, I'm, this I didn't get a personal message about the three days of darkness. Now, what I'm telling you is what I've received from other prophets and messengers, and I believe them, okay? So I'm passing on the message to you. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know when it's going to happen, but we know something is going to happen. I have received that message myself that something is going to happen. So saints, be prepared for anything. Um, make sure you have candles, okay? Um, and we were told to get plain candles. Like if you can just get white candles, that's great. You don't want scented uh, candles. You don't want anything written on the candles. You don't want any kind of Catholic candles or anything like that. We're just talking about plain wax candles. Um, no writing, no smells, nothing like that. Just plain candles. And you want to have those in your house. Um, and and the, the warning that I have received from other messengers and prophets, etc., is that if you see in the sky um, colors, light colors, um, I mean, in Norway they have the lights in the sky. So if you see that kind of phenomenon going on in the sky, that is the sign that you need to get home as fast as you can. You close your windows, you, you close your doors, don't look outside your windows don't open the door for anyone you need to tell your family and your friends in advance about this so that if we see the phenomenon happening in the sky we can tell them to come over to our house because everyone needs to be in the house of a believer um, and so you you have your windows and your doors covered with the scriptures you close your windows you close your doors only let in those people who you have told in advance your friends and family and loved ones um, and at that time you can light your candles and you can pray um, and 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 stay inside don't go outside so it kind of reminds me of that movie um, the bird the bird box on Netflix that we I don't know I rem I think we talked about that before but it kind of reminds me of the premise of that movie the bird box they had to stay inside keep the window shut you know just like in Exodus so there you go. That, that, like I said, that's not a direct message that I personally got from Holy Yahushua. That's what I'm understanding from other messengers who have, um, and prophets who have gotten that message. So 
uh, there you go. You want to be prepared for anything because we know that um, something is coming very soon. The 2323 code, we talked about that already. So let's get to the meat of the business, which is the 88 time travel travelers. It's time, it's time code. As I started explaining last week, so the reason why 88 means time is because in the sky you have the moon and the sun and it the movement of it makes an eight in the sky now um enter the stars he talks about this more he talks a lot about 88 so if you really want detailed information on 88 um, please go to uh, enter the stars channel so in short this is why the 88 is a reference to time because the sun and the moon is how we judge our time, the setting of the sun and, and, and etc. Now, here is a video I'm going to show you just a little bit of it. I want you to notice that the full length is 808, and so 808, when you put it together, is 88. You can take off the zero, it's 88. And when I paused it, I didn't do this on purpose, but when I paused it to take the screenshot, it was at 1.11. It's an important timestamp from the Holy Father, so you can take note. Um, I also want you to notice that this was published on July 23rd. That's my birthday. So another important uh, timestamp for this video. So let's look and see quickly, what does 88 lightning and nukes have to do with the escape? Before I play this video, I just want to bring to your attention that I, I have done a video about 88 before and CERN, and it's right here. I use this TV show, The Legends, to explain 88. And the reason I'm using these TV shows is because you can see it in front of your eyes. You can see it manifested in the real world, and that's how you know it's not from my imagination. It's not from someone's imagination. It's a real thing, all right? So um, it's here in this video. This is... Um, Episode 5 out of 11 for Janice Duality Playlist. Um, it's talking about the 88 Paradox, and this is very important because, as I said, we're going to start talking about time travel, and we're talking about the, the true meeting place where Jesus will meet us, bring us to safety, uh, Revelation, uh, the woman of Revelation 12 in the wilderness, uh, which is a spiritual, uh, dimensional uh, type of travel and we're talking about the false meeting place which is AI uh, this uh, web of technological innovations that will uh, spring upon humanity suddenly all at the same time within the next few years which will create another meeting place a false meeting place an artificial we're talking about the difference between Pi the Christ mind or AI, the global brain. They are two worlds that are going to be created and exist at the same time, parallel, okay? Because the the evil ones, Satan and his army, he, they know that their time is short. They know they're going to be defeated, so they need to catch as many um, bees as they can. Bees in the trap. Bees in the trap. Bees in the trap. I don't even know that song. I just know that chorus and and I knew what it meant they need to catch as many bees with the honey as they can and so they're using this false meeting place okay um, this false meeting place involves CERN okay um, so it's very complicated to explain so um, guys unfortunately I, I obviously I can't replay an old video but here it is the information is here if you want more information about 88 and also um, enter the stars his channel he talks about that a lot but here this is some new information we want to understand how 88 the duality of time how we have these two um, worlds that are going to these two meeting places that are going to collide it's going to collide and it's going to and when that collision happens between the false meeting place and the real meeting place when they collide it's going to be the explosion, and that's when you get the escape. All right, let's look and see how uh, we can see that manifested in the world.
we we see that represented here his his uh, uh, machine is at 88 you see the lightning remember we talked about the lightning um, so the thunder is the sound the light is the visual but it is still the the will of the most high father so you can see here it strikes and this is causing the explosion that's going to happen symbolically So then we have the time portal, okay? When this explosion happens, the time portal is going to open, saints. And I want you to notice this is the most important part right here. Right here. Assembly of Christ. That is who's going to be going through that portal. It is the assembly of Christ. All right, saints, I, I don't know how that can be any clearer of what the 88 time uh, code what it means so um, here you can see the reason I put nukes here is because that was my original imagination I was like well we know there's going to be explosion so it must be a nuke right it might be a nuke but it could also be uh, planet X and we talked about planet X earlier I, th I think it I don't know if it, it might have been sister Polly who had a dream about planet X and she said that it it uh, it came with an explosion. I'm, I'm not sure. So anyway, what I'm saying is it could be a nuke, but it might not be a nuke. It might be Planet X that comes and somehow creates an explosion. I don't know how this explosion is going to happen, but whatever it is, is when it happens, that is when the portal is going to open. That is the, the, the sign that the escape is going to happen. That is when the portal is going to open. Now, it's very important that in these videos, they are connecting the lightning bolt with the nuclear um, and the 88. And, and that's what I want to show you. It all goes together. The Senate is expected to vote on this today. In other news, officials at the Pacific Nuclear Research Facility have denied the rumor that a case of missing plutonium was in fact stolen from their vault two weeks ago. A Libyan terrorist group had claimed responsibility for the alleged theft. However, officials now attribute the discrepancy to a simple clerical error. Help! Help! What do I do? Nothing! Any interference could kill her! I'll be there in two minutes! If Ziggy's right, all you have to do is break Mach 3 and live. No way. Hey, pal, it's not my theory. There's got to be another way. The next one's only got a 52% chance of work. I'll take it. It requires you to be at ground zero during an atomic detonation. You asked. To leap together, we would have had to either been struck by lightning or have been sitting at ground zero during an atomic oh. detonation. Oh, it was lightning. Uh. Lightning. I remember a big bolt just as we leaped. Read this. Date of birth. August 8, 1953. August 8, 1953. It's the day I was born. Dr. Samuel Beckett. Born 8-8-53. So, Saints, I want you to take notice that he said 8, he was born. Remember the picture we talked about you die with Holy Yahushua and his crucifixion so that you can live with him and rise in your in his resurrection. So it's like a birthday, isn't it? It would be a birthday for us, right? Because we would be escaping alive like Holy Yahushua did. Do you guys see this? This is so beautiful. Wow, I'm just blown away myself. Did you hear what I just said? So in that picture from Manifest, we die with him in his crucifixion so that we can rise and live um, with him in his resurrection. And just as he did, he ascended into heaven. Uh, he, he ascended into heaven alive, right? And that's what we're going to do as well. We're going to uh, ascend. He's going to call us and we're going to ascend to him, go to him alive. We're going to escape. 
That is our birth, our new birth, our, our, our birthday. That's when he was born. So as you can see, the connection between 88, which is time travel, and also the um, different dimensions represented by the sun and the moon, um, also represented by the, the secret meeting place of Holy Yahushua, which is in the Bible, and also the meeting place of Satan, which is being formed with this AI on the computer. These two worlds, they're going to collide at some point, and when they do, that means they can no longer exist together. Right now we have the tares and the wheat um, living in the same place. Here's the Bible verse on the screen. Um, and we will not be separated out until it separates us, right? So when this happens, when we can no longer exist in the same place, that's going to happen at the point where his chosen, his elect, the uh, bride of Holy Yahushua, when we will no longer be able to be here is when um, it gets to the point where if we don't take the mark, we're going to be killed. Do you see what I mean? It gets to the point where we're not able to live here anymore safely without taking the mark. At that time is when we get pulled out and that is going, the catalyst of that is gonna happen when this these two worlds collide, is going to be that explosion. And it looks like this explosion is um, connected to a nuclear explosion, but that might not be the reason why we have the explosion. Maybe it's because they're trying to blow up an asteroid or maybe it's because of planet X or I don't know but that explosion for the moment and what we see around us manifested is connected to nukes all right and that is the sign when you when we have that explosion we know that we have anywhere from one day to seven days to escape or that could also represent one year to seven years to escape but either way the escape would have to happen between that explosion and before the great and terrible tribulation, which from what I understand in the timeline, Matthew 24 is 2032. Now, just to give you some confirmation, this is um, a dream from Sister Polly and this is a confirmation about the DNA. Before she saw the video that I did, she had a dream and it, she was shown that uh, she and I, we had several mouth swabs taken and that has to do with the DNA. And she was given the word microcosm, which is defined as humankind regarded as the epitome of the universe. So just so you know, um, that was confirmation about the DNA part that we talked about just before. And also on uh, March 31st, she woke up with the song Radioactive in her head. Um, you know, radioactive, radioactive. And that was just when I was receiving the message about uh, the escape will happen after an explosion or at the same time of, as an explosion, right? However that works out. And here it's a confirmation that she sent me um she says holy yahushua showed me the following in a dream last night of you me uh dreamt father had displayed numbers in the sky and messenger paula deciphered it by using calculus so what i, I want to show you is that calculus actually means counting that's that's what calculus means it means counting it means counting. So what I want to bring to your attention is that in the sky, you have the sun, which is eight, and you have the moon, which is eight, and that is 88. So if I'm calculating, if I'm counting something that's in the sky, it would be 88. Do you see what I mean? That's what I'm doing here. I'm pointing that out to you, the 88, because the 88 is the sign that it's time. That's what that means. It's time for us to time travel through the portal. That's what 88 means. 88 means it's time for us to travel through the portal. That is when Holy Yahushua is going to call us with a shout and we're going to travel through that portal, okay? And that is gonna be kicked off by an explosion, all right? Most likely in some way connected to uh, a nuclear bomb, whether that's the reason why, I'm not saying it's nuclear war, I'm just saying it's connected to that somehow. And that's what we can see here. 
So uh, saints, just remember we're travelers and I just wanted to remind you that in the TV show Travelers, they their names are numbers. Anyway, you have time behind them. You have also this planet right here, don't we? I don't know if that's the moon or something else. Well, I guess it's the moon. And then you have the lightning, right? And then you have the travelers. So that's how we can see just with the picture how when you have the lightning, when you have the, this is the time portal that's going to open when you have this lightning and we're going to travel. It's right here in the picture. Those who have their name right here because Psalms 91. 14. 14! There's the 14 code. Do you see how it works? 14. The 14th verse. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. Boom shakalaka. Drop the mic. Now this high right here, we talked about high as also meaning, it also means 88 right here. Hi. Do you remember? I'm going to show you the video again. Look at the video. Do you remember I, I put this video? Do you see that? Hi, 88. Because he hath known my name. Because remember, he gives us his name. His name is Pi. When you know this, when you can understand this, you can read his language, you know his name. He can talk to you. You can. You will be configured like kind of like a computer in a way, if you want to think of it that way, to have to pass so you can go through the gate. And you're going to be going through the right gate. The 14, the 14, 14. I will deliver him. We're going to escape. He's going to set us on high out of this matrix because we have known his name right there. Boom. Um, I have the feeling that I'm running out of time, so I won't be able to explain this properly in this video. But next week, I'm going to come back. We're still talking about the escape, guys. I'm going to come back and I'm going to explain the April 19th uh, message that we've gotten from... I've gotten it. Sister Polly's gotten it. Um, God's healer has gotten it. Um, and also this sister right here that you can see on the screen here, she's received confirmation of April 19th. Now the Q, that right here represents Quetzalcoatl. Now this information comes from Enter the Stars and you can on your own do that research what you're going to find at the end is that this is representing the coming of Satan. <laughs> this is representing who I call, who the letter lines call the Prince of Persia and who Christians call the Antichrist. It is representing that. That's what that's representing. He's coming. This right here is the countdown to all of these events uh, popping off. And the popping off of these events will begin now. Probably by the time you watch this video, um, it's because I, I record a week in advance. So I think you'll be watching this video on April 19th. Um, so I'm not saying that something specifically is going to happen on that day. Maybe, maybe not. It might happen the day before, the day after, the week before, the week after. I, I have no idea. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the countdown to these events are ready to pop off and the date that we have been warned about is April 19th and so that is probably the day now that is also Passover right that is also Passover um, this year on the on the Jewish calendar not not the um, ancient calendar but the the Gregorian calendar and so whatever might happen or might not happen that date is a, a, a warning we have been warned that this is when these things are going to begin to manifest that's the best way I can say it so next week I'm going to come back um, and we're going to 
look more into what this is, Katsukotl, the Q, what that represents, and uh, the time that we're in, which is now all of these things that have been prophesized are going to be happening now, right? All of the secrets are going to be coming out. Everything that was in the dark is going to be exposed. There's not going to be any anything um, that's hidden in the dark that will not be brought to light. It's beginning now. Um, the the um, Satan's army is uh, beginning to manifest, and we're going to start to see that more and more. All of the signs of of Satan's coming is going to be manifested, and they're they're um, we're going to be seeing this now. So uh, again, saints, the beginning, the name of this video is, is uh, prepare your house. So remember to prepare yourself spiritually, mentally, physically. Um, prepare yourself, saints. Prepare yourself for anything and everything. And know if you see this, the the those lights in the sky, get home, get your family home. Um, and when you, if there's an explosion, you know I don't expect it to be anytime soon. We're talking in the future between uh, 2024 and 2031, you know, but um, regardless, know that if when that explosion happens, that is the countdown for the escape. So I'll come back next week. We'll finish wrapping up this point here. Um, and then we're going to be pretty much done with the escape from that point. It's just uh, the escape and, and the shield. There's just one point uh, that I want to bring up. I want to bring some more confirmations. I want to explain a little bit better about what's happening inside of us when we're, our DNA is activated. And I want to give um, some more confirmation about uh, the Revelation verse when it talks about the woman goes to the wilderness and she comes back. So what happens after the escape? do we come back to earth how do we come back to earth and all of that so there's two dreams here from a change is coming and i just wanted to use that as confirmation saints and then we we will be done um as far as i know unless ruach hakadesh tells me differently we'll be done with the shield and we'll be ready to move on to the prophecy and you guys want to hold on to your hats because wow oh wow oh 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 wow okay oh wow you won't. Mm. Wow. So um, I love you guys very much. I pray that it was um, clear. The video, it's not easy to explain. Thank you for bearing with me. I give all glory and honor to the Most High Father, Holy Yahuwah and Yahushua HaMashiach's holy name. Love you, saints. I pray you have a wonderful Sabbath. Mwah. Shalom. Shalom.